What's up, X and YouTube? Matt A here. Today we're going to talk about Bethesda, Fallout 4, specifically the next gen update, and how it screwed over Fallout London and the release of Fallout London, the mod Fallout London, right? Um, I'm making this video not for rage bait, but to get my opinion out there because I want to talk about something that no one else is really talking about. No one else is talking about this problem that Bethesda has that I've noticed for a long time. Well, since Skyrim, at least, okay? The problem with Bethesda is poor executive management. And what I mean by that is they're not managing the people well. Creatively, it's fine. Developmentally, it's fine. Now, hold on a second. I know. But developmentally, it's fine. Their vision is good. Their projects are good. On paper, what they want to do is good. Their their traje trajectory is good. Their you know their their uh their stretch plan, their, everything that all their goals, mission statement, everything like that, that's all good. But it's not being managed or run properly. How is that so? Well, I'll put it to you this way. Only 100 de developers worked on Skyrim, right? About 100. In modern times, modern AAA games have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of developers working on them. Bethesda, the entire studio, has less than 600 developers and less than 100 working on Fallout 4. So we're talking about, hold on a second. We're talking about less than 100 developers are working on a billion dollar franchise. Fallout is a billion dollar franchise and you have less than a hundred developers working on it. Fallout 4, the next gen update had less than a hundred people working on it for 18 months. That That's not something someone who can manage, manage people properly does. That's not someone who has executive experience does. So what I'm saying is we don't need someone who's a gamer in charge of Bethesda, which we'll, that's what we have right now. We need someone who is an executive who can manage people, who can put them and put them, make them more efficient in the places that they need to be, who can divvy up resources, who understands brand equity. Because less than 100 developers, I'm, we're talking probably 50 at best, worked on the Fallout 4 next gen update. That is ridiculous. You're talking about a billion dollar franchise, people. A billion dollar franchise. And you're upgrading it to play for literally probably a couple of million people on new consoles. And you have less than 50, we assume, we know it's less than 100. Probably less than 50 people working on it for 18 months. And from a business perspective, I get it. Because it's not paid for, you don't have to pay to get this upgrade. But that's not an excuse because what what they're doing is they're damaging their brand equity. And that is far, far, far more critical than just having extra personnel work on this next gen update. I'll give you an example. Ever since Fallout 76 launched the way it did, Bethesda has had this negativity around their brand ever since. They've always had bugs, but their games have always been so fun and their development has always been so small, they were seen more as an indie game dev, right? By the time when Skyrim came out, they weren't really a AAA publisher like we know them now, right? That's what put them up there. Before that, they, they barely got by with Morrowind. And when they made Oblivion, that was their breakout success was Oblivion. And then New Vegas came out and they had nothing since then. There, there was no Skyrim yet. There was no Fallout 4 yet. It was Oblivion that saved them. And then they moved, you know, uh, to Fallout New Vegas, which Obsidian did. And then after that, you know, they were able to move to Skyrim and only 100 people were working on Skyrim. That The grace that everybody gave them is gone now. That grace that, hey, you're just a small indie game studio making really awesome, cool, big games that no one else can do. That's gone now. You, you're, there are billions and billions of dollar franchises with them. 
Elder Scrolls is a billion dollar franchise. Fallout is a billion dollar franchise. Starfield would be that, or it can be that. So potentially another billion dollar franchise. And then you have all the Umbrella Studios and you got Doom and all that, et cetera, et cetera. And you're telling me that you put less than 50 developers on a billion dollar franchise that's going to be one of the few ways that anyone with next-gen consoles can play it. And you made it a total disaster. You're going, you're, you're telling me you're Microsoft. Okay. You're Todd Howard. No offense, but you're, you're letting, you're not putting the resources that you need into a next-gen update that you know is going to be played by a couple million people or more. And you literally drop the ball with it on a billion dollar franchise who does that the only the only franchise that's more mismanaged than the ones at bethesda are disney and star wars okay yeah i said it the only the only big company that's managing a big franchise into the ground worse than bethesda is managing their franchises is disney but this is not not quite there not quite as bad as disney obviously they're not that bad, right? They still make really good stuff. I love Starfield. I defend, I play Starfield. I play Skyrim, I play Oblivion. Hell, I play Daggerfall. I play every single game but does the mix. This is not coming from a place of rage bait. I promise you. This is coming from a business perspective. You are They are hurting their brand equity by having so few employees, so few developers work on their games. That is insane. And currently, right now, there's only 255 people working on Starfield. You, you've got to be kidding me. That's why there are so many bugs. That's why Starfield is so empty. Do you know how many developers are working on GTA 6? Did you realize that? Starfield had less than 400 people working on it. Look how many people worked on GTA 5. A thousand. A thousand people worked on GTA 5. Two thousand people worked on Red Dead Redemption 2. When people compare Starfield or Bethesda games to Red Dead Redemption 2, remember, remember this. Remember this. They had five times less developers working on Starfield than Red Dead Redemption 2. Two thousand developers on RDR2. 400 on Starfield. Can you imagine? Can you how is how is this not a mismanagement? Be beyond 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 compare. Beyond comparison. And GTA 6 has 3000. GTA 6 has 3000 developers. Now, I know Starfield is, Actually, yeah, Starfield is bigger than GTA 6 because it has unlimited planets. So if you really want to compare franchises, okay, you're comparing Grand Theft Auto to a Bethesda franchise, like say something like Starfield, you have 400 developers on Starfield, you have 3000 on GTA 6. Make it make sense, people make it make sense. Okay, make it make sense. And I know that GTA is going to get a little bit going to get more investment than Starfield would being a new IP, but they're not that far off. The amount of money that Skyrim has made compared to Grand Theft Auto, they're pretty close. They're in the top 10. They're in the top five games of all time. So the fact that you only have 400 people working on a brand new Bethesda franchise that should be a billion dollar franchise is completely insane. And this all goes back to my point with Fallout. You have less than 50 people on a Fallout, a billion dollar franchise. And overall total, I think Fallout 76 and Fallout all together maybe has 200 something developers. GTA 6, 3,000. Red Dead Redemption 2, 2,000. 1,000 people worked on GTA 5. It's astronomically low. The amount of people they have working on Bethesda projects are way, 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 way too low. And no one's talking about this. No one's talking about that. So I wanted to point it out. I wanted to be the one to sit here and say, ex Bethesda does need an executive. They need an executive who can manage people and understands resource allocation to projects. They need someone who understands brand equity and they need to put, they need to double, triple their studio size. 
to be honest with you, the only way that they could solve their problem is to triple their studio size. And then you could have the proper development. Why do you think Starfield is so empty? Starfield is so empty because they have five times less people working on it than Red Dead Redemption 2. And it's a bigger game because it has unlimited planets, basically. It has a thousand planets. So, I mean, come on. It's just obvious. This is not a ding against Todd. This is not a ding against Microsoft or Xbox. This is just critical feedback that someone needs to manage the studio, manage these projects better. Because it is completely, completely unacceptable to have so few resources invested into such a high value franchise like Fallout or Elder Scrolls. Elder Scrolls 6? Oh my God, it should have 2,000 people working on it. But does the studio size is only 500. They should have 2,000 people working on Elder Scrolls 6. Elder Scrolls 6 is going to be as big as GTA 6. They should have two to 3,000 people working on it. And they don't. They have like 100 people or whatever it is working on it. That, that, that's insane. And people are wondering why. Why is it so buggy? Why is it taking 20 years to come out? That's why. That's why. It's not Bethesda's fault. They're doing everything right. It's not their fault. They're not being managed properly. It's management's fault. It's executive management. That's where they're failing. They're not failing in ideas. They're not failing in creativity. They're failing in management and resource management and people management. They're failing corporately. That's odd to say, I know. But for a game to be successful, once they're that big, you need corporate experience. You need someone who can actually manage the franchise and studio. They're not doing that. They're still operating like they're still operating like they did on Skyrim, like they like they're an indie dev. You're not some cool indie dev in college, bro. You're a giant billion dollar corporation. You need to manage your studio and put the resources properly into your projects. No one's saying that. I am. I'm saying that right now. Now, we have some more things to go over, too, because this is going to lead me into my discussion about the Fallout 4 Next Gen update and how it screwed over the Fallout London developers. And yes, I'm calling Fallout 4 London, I'm calling the modders who worked on that developers because they deserve it. They are developers. They've been working on this game for years, professionally for years. They are developers. And I get that, but that... Fallout is Bethesda's franchise, right? I get all that. I get that Fallout is Bethesda's franchise. I get that they didn't ask for this mod. I get that there's no financial like exchanges with this mod. I get that. But look, as just a straight up professional courtesy, right? Just as a professional courtesy, let the, let the people know, De co-develop with them. If you have less than 50 developers, on you know fallout next gen update why not contract them out to help you with the next gen update while they're also developing fallout london business decision subcontracted out 1099s we're going to subcontract you guys out you're already working on fallout london we're going to subcontract you out to work with our official development team so we can get the next gen update out it'll be polished and have fewer bugs because these people really know Bethesda games really well and it can launch in succession with Fallout London. They could launch roughly at the same time and be polished because they had an inner working professional relationship contract work together. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I would say that is basic professional courtesy, just professional courtesy, man. This is what I'm talking about. There's no corporate experience at Bethesda. This is the problem. And it's Microsoft's fault because they own them now. Bethesda is Microsoft's flagship studio now. They have no excuse for this lack of corporate experience. Contract workers out. Work with them. They have been developing this mod for years and years and years. And you're going to, you know, screw them over with this next gen update and ruin the entire project. So you can see here. Yeah, this is an article by uh, Mark Warren, 
And this is uh, where are we at? VG 24 seven. Okay. And Fallout London's project lead has confirmed that the massive mod will need to downgrade your copy of Fallout 4 to a version from before the next gen updates that dropped earlier this year in order to be able to play it. The reason cited is that the next gen version of Bethesda's RPG isn't stable enough. There are no words. There are no words for this. This is professionally unacceptable. It's it's unacceptable for your brand. This is bad PR. This is bad all all around. This is bad all around. If Fallout, if Fallout or or any of the other Bethesda franchises were any other franchise and they didn't have the 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 you know the fan base and everything backing them up, they would be toast. This would be a death blow to any any other franchise. It would. And like you see here, if you're out of loop, Fallout London's a full conversion. Fallout London is a full conversion mod for Fallout 4 that's set, you know, in a post-apocalyptic version of English capital London. Complete with fresh factions and quests, Fallout 4's next-gen update forced creators to abandon their planned release date of April 23rd. They've had this date for locked in for a long, long time. And Bethesda or uh, Microsoft, they have no professional courtesy whatsoever because they don't they don't treat these people like professionals. They don't act like professionals. You you can't give you can't give someone a professional courtesy and you know their release date is coming up. You know, like I get they don't work for you. I get you're not getting any money exchanging or all that good stuff. But it's just this is like a common courtesy type thing. The mod has been left in what's felt like a bit of purgatory, of course. However, at the weekend, the team behind Fallout London released a statement revealing that the mod is now undergoing Q&A testing by GOG.com, the storefront that will be distributing it, and is therefore just waiting for the final green light. Now see, that's good because GOG stepped in where Bethesda has failed and helped, and helped them polish it up and QA test it and get it to the finish line. GOG is being awesome by by hosting this mod. GOG is coming in and giving these people a little bit of support that they couldn't get from a giant billion dollar corporation. And you can see GOG have been amazing through all of this. To be honest, we've been the ones causing them the issue. Carter has explained a post on the game's discord server. What with us having things break due to next gen update and then needing third parties to update update. Basically, I think he's talking about the mods need to be updated from third parties to get theirs to get their mod to work on the next gen update, then waiting for them to be fixed only for the fact that the 11th hour we've discovered that the next gen version of Fallout 4, even after updates, isn't stable enough. And thus we are now going out on the old version. Hence the need for a downgrader. Again, this is not the hit on Bethesda. This is just mind boggling to me that there is no, no one with corporate experience running this place. It's like, it's like they're all uh, college devs just doing whatever they want. No professional cur courtesy to the, the Fallout London modders. No, no management of resources. Five times fewer devs than Red Dead Redemption 2 and their entire studio. Uh, mind-boggling low amount of resources developed to billion-dollar franchises. And, and Elder Scrolls 6? <laughs> Dude. Probably, I would, probably has 10 times less developers on it than GTA 6. Remember that. When Elder, when Elder Scrolls 6 comes out, remember how few people worked on it. Remember how few developers they had on it. Remember that. Remember that Starfield only had 400-ish developers working on it. Remember that the DLC for Starfield only has 250 people working on it. Okay, for a giant game with nearly infinite amount of space on planets where they could do stuff. That's why the game is so empty. It's not Bethesda's fault. They didn't purposefully do that. They don't have the time because they don't have the people, because they don't have the resources, because they're not managed properly, executively. Like I said, everything's good with them. Story, all that stuff is good. I don't have complaints about that stuff. My complaints with them is how they're run executively. 
because that's what's hurting them and that's what's killing their brand. Being gamers for gamers sounds cool until you have 50 people working on the next gen update for almost two years. That's a complete failure on a billion dollar franchise. Uh, that's the video. I try not to be negative. I don't want to have rage bait videos, but this needs to be talked out because no one else is saying it. No one is pointing that out. They want to hate on Bethesda and blame Bethesda, but they don't, they don't identify where the issue is. The issue is with the management of the resources. It is not with Bethesda itself. It is the fact no one talks about this. Red Dead Redemption 2 had five times the developers of Starfield. And that game came out way before Starfield. Can you imagine? Can you imagine having a billion dollar game come out in 2025 and only 400 people working on it? It just doesn't work that way. You, you, you can, in these big open world games, you can't. Just for fun, let's see how many people worked on Assassin's Creed Shadows. Let's see, let's just take a look. How many devs worked on Assassin's Creed Shadows? So just for fun, I, I tried to find it. I couldn't find it, but here we have 15 different studios across the world have worked on Assassin's Creed Shadows. Because these big open world games, you can't just have 100 people working on it, Bethesda. You can't just put 400 people on a billion dollar franchise and expect things to go well. They're not. They're not going to go very well. They're not just, they're just not going to go very well. And this is the problem. This is the problem. Bethesda is not the problem. Bethesda is not the problem. The management is the problem. Todd is not the problem. Whoever is in charge of the whole thing, whoever, wherever the buck stops, that person's, it's that person's fault. That person is dropping the ball on their executive management of these billion dollar franchises. And Microsoft is so big that the other executives, the board members and things like that, they don't even pay attention to this stuff because it's small potatoes to them. You know, what do they care? There's a, a trillion, trillion dollar company. But I'm telling you, it's managed poorly. That's the video. That's what I wanted to talk about. No one else is saying it. There's too few people working on Bethesda games. There are too few people working on these games. Five times less developers working on Starfield than worked on Red Dead Redemption 2. And God only knows how few people are working on the Elder Scrolls 6. God only knows because we sure don't. I should say Todd only knows. It's not too late for them to help Sky help Elder Scrolls 6 before it fails, before they ruin Elder Scrolls 6. It's not too late for them to hire a thousand people and put them on Elder Scrolls 6 so it doesn't flop. In conclusion, I love Starfield. I love Bethesda. I've played every single Bethesda game that they've made within reason, even Red Guard, okay? I love all the franchises. I still play Fallout 4. I still play New Vegas. I still play Daggerfall, Oblivion, Morrowind, you know, Skyrim. I do all of that. I defend it. You know, I post positive, I post positive videos about Starfield. I review mods and stuff like that for Starfield. This is definitely not rage bait. This is critical feedback, professional critical feedback. And to point out something in the industry, I see literally no one talking about. No one has brought this up at all. No one. That I know of. If they have, let me know. That's the video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you watched to the end. Hopefully this gave you some insight and you can understand, but that's the more now. Hopefully that this lets you realize that there's nothing wrong with Bethesda. It's just that they don't have enough resources or people working on their games. That's it. Thank you for watching the video. Thank you for liking and subscribing. We are on our way to 200. I will see you in the next video. Thanks.